Hey, Handyman Dan here with You Can Build This. We've got 10 years of gardening experience in our urban home. When you're first starting a garden, it can seem very overwhelming on what to plant, where to plant, how to plant. So we've combined all of our 10 years of experience and whittled it down into six easy tips for you to get a thriving garden wherever you live. Tip number six is my favorite. We are gonna cover a lot of material in this video and it's probably gonna seem a little bit overwhelming. To make it easier for you so you don't have to remember everything and find this video later on. We've put all six tips into a simple PDF that you can download straight to your computer or your phone and have it as a reference whenever you need it. Tip number one has to do with which plants you should plant earlier in the season and which plants you should plant later in the season. And this is based on their ability to resist cold weather. There are plants that are more resistant to cold weather and then there are plants that are like, no way, I do not like the cold at all. This means that there are different planting seasons for different types of plants. Our garden is on the south end of our home. Only parts of our garden get sunlight early in the year when the sun is still low on the horizon. So we had to be strategic about which planter boxes we could use first because not all of our planter boxes were going to get sun in like the months of March and April. The rest of our planter boxes don't get full sunlight until later months like the end of April or the beginning of May when the sun is higher in the horizon. In this planter box we've got all of our vegetables that grow when it's colder weather. But the nice thing is you can plant these twice a year. Where we live, we plant them in March or April, and then we plant them again in August when it's past the hottest part of the summer. And then we can have another yield when it's cooler, like September, October. We actually really love doing romaine lettuce because you can just keep pulling it and it'll just keep growing versus iceberg lettuce where you just get a big head of lettuce. We pull leaves like this every once in a while and it just keeps Keeps producing. Our other planter box that we've got for cold weather things, right here we've got carrots. In between the carrots we've got onions, we've got more carrots, and then here we've planted nasturtiums. Tip number two is to put some of your plants in pots. Right here we've got octopus drip system. It's got eight different heads on it. This allows us to put a bunch of different pots in this area. Two things we've got in pots right here. These are blueberry bushes. The reason we put blueberries in pots is because our soil is not very acidic and blueberries need acidic soil. We're able to control the soil that goes into these pots and it's different than the soil that goes into our planter boxes. Other things that we put in pots are things that spread like crazy and that's usually herbs. You can isolate them to the pot and keep them contained so that they won't overtake your planter box area. My wife loves to grow menthol and then she'll cut off a portion of it and propagate it and put it into another pot. Some herbs that spread a lot are like menthol, peppermint, lemon balm. My wife found these recently. Instead of using pots, these are kind of like a fabric bag. She's put potatoes in most of them and kind of spread them out throughout the garden. Tip number three is to keep your garden simple. When you're starting out a garden for the first time, you may be so excited about planting that you go to the store and you get every type of seed packet or plant. You thinking what I'm thinking? Our main suggestion is to keep it simple. Take a hard look at the plants that you actually like and eat frequently and then try to plant those. If you enjoy eating the vegetables that you plant, most likely you're gonna plant them again. I remember the first time we started our garden, we were so excited and we went to the store and bought so many seed packets. Done and done. And it was ridiculous because when we got home, we were like, uh, we don't actually have enough space to do all these things. If you get a huge assortment of vegetables that you think you're gonna eat and you don't know how to take care of them throughout the season, you may become overwhelmed and not like gardening at all, which would be a tragedy. Tip number four has to do with best planting practices. When you go to the garden center and you get a potted plant, you need to know the best way to take care of it when you first plant it so that it has the best chance of surviving in your garden. When we pull this out of the pot, we're going to pay attention to the roots. So the roots don't actually look too bad on this tree. We're still going to cut off the bottom portion of this tree. This is what we call root bound, where the roots, they've been bound by this box that they've been in. If we were to just put this in the dirt and let it grow, the roots would continue in that circular fashion and it would inhibit the growth of this tree. So we're just gonna take our spade and cut off these roots to cause it to focus its growth out and to kind of restart its growth. Tip number five has to do with garden watering. 
There are so many ways to take care of the watering in your garden, whether you're gonna hand water, or you're going to install a drip system, or you're gonna try these cool little terracotta pots. There are so many ways to water your garden. Most of all, whatever is simplest enough for you, that's what you should do. For our scenario, what we found is the best way to do garden watering is to install a drip system. We have had so much more success when we've automated our watering system because life just happens. Whether you go on a trip or you had some hot days and you forgot to water, having an automated watering system in your garden is huge. And we learned later that some plants just don't like to get doused with water on the whole plant. We can better tailor almost each box to have more or less water depending on what plants we have in there. This drip system has been the least amount of maintenance and the most efficient use of our watering. If you want to learn how to install your own drip system, take a look at my video I made here. Thank you for watching this far in our video. That means you really enjoy gardening and you want to learn more. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're interested, you can sign up for our weekly email where we share tips and tricks and builds and new video posts. Tip number six has to do with companion planting. And it is my favorite because it is so broad and covers such a range of information. We're only gonna cover it briefly in this video because there is so much information on it, but we're gonna make a video all about companion planting and we wanna share everything we've learned with you. Plain and simple, companion planting is the method of planting different types of plants together which help support each other. Flowers will bring in a lot of really good beneficial bugs, pollinators, butterflies. Carrots and onions go really well together because onions have a really pungent smell under the ground. With carrots growing down into the dirt, the pungent smell from the onions helps to detract any bugs that like to go into the dirt. We've tried something new this time. We're doing three different types of strawberries. In between the strawberries, we've got onions growing and then we've got some cabbage. If you feel like there's something that we've missed or there's something you wanna learn more about, please put it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching You Can Build This. We'll see you on the next one.